Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or so ago, I did my first video on the latest version of the Nick Collection, that is the Nick Collection 5. And in that video, I covered the application that is meant to be used with black and white images, that is SilverFX Pro 3. So I thought it would be fitting for my very next video to cover the application in the Nick Collection that is meant for color images, that's Viveza 3. Now we're going to be working on this image and you can see I have it opened up in Lightroom. The Nick Collection applications work as plugins in Lightroom Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and Photolab. Now they do work as standalone applications and I did make a mistake in that SilverFX Pro 3 video mentioning that if you use them as standalone apps they will work on RAW files. That is not true, I was wrong. They do not work as RAW files when they do not work on RAW files when you use them as standalone apps. When you use them as standalone apps, they will work on JPEGs, TIFFs, and PSD. So I want to correct that here. But I digress. We are using this as a plugin in Lightroom. And all I did on this image in Lightroom is lens corrections. I didn't do any other processing on it at all. I want to do all of my processing in Viveza 3. So I'm going to send it over there. I'm going to right click right on the image. Go down to edit in and then over and down to the bottom here, Viveza 3. Now, I uh, mentioned many times with Lightroom, uh, you cannot send a RAW file into any plugin, including Viveza 3. You have to send either a TIFF, a PSD, or a JPEG. And the NIC collection, it is recommended that you send TIFF files. And these are the default settings here, sRGB 16 bits. I'll just keep with those default settings and click edit. Now you can see on the top left hand corner there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that this TIFF file with those specs and it will open it up directly into Viveza 3. And the workspace for Viveza 3 is the same as most of the apps in the NIC collection in that on the left hand side you have presets. And if you saw that video I did on SilverFX Pro 3, I recommended with that app that you pick a preset that is close to what you want because it will save you a lot of time because there's so many controls in SilverFX Pro 3 that, that will help you uh, save time and get you close to what you want and then you could just touch it up with the controls on the right hand side. You could do that with Viveza 3 as, as well. You could see that there's uh, all these different presets uh, and you could pick one here that you like. You can see the little uh, preview of each of the presets are there. But there's not as many controls in Viveza 3 as there are in SilverFX Pro 3 so it isn't as difficult starting uh, the, or doing the processing on an, on an image from scratch. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to pick a preset. I'm just going to process this from scratch. Now we have global adjustments and then we have local adjustments in the form of control points. I'm going to start out with global adjustments first. And looking at the image, um, this was taken several years ago in Virginia Beach. I kind of like the warm and the cool tones. Uh, side by side, but I want to try to accentuate that and add to it and I want to add some contrast to it So I'm going to go right to contrast and add some contrast to the image Like that I'm not going to add any saturation um, Let's see shadows. I'm going to maybe just touch it up just a touch warmer and Then go down here. Uh, let's see. I bring highlights down just a touch Open up the midtones just a bit and then maybe pull the blacks down just a little bit. So just minor adjustments I'm doing right now. Um, so that's so far, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So you see, I really didn't do much, but I do want to do something with the sky. The sky was actually quite spectacular, but unfortunately it looks kind of flat. Uh, in my image, so I want to do something with that. So I'm going to use a local adjustment for that, specifically a control point. So I'm going to go over here and click on the little control point icon. And when I do that, I get this kind of little circle. And I'll come up here and I'll put the control point in the sky on the left hand side, like right there. And I want to make it larger so that it covers that as much as the sky as possible over here on the left. Now what happens with control points when you use them, right where you put that little point, uh, what these apps will do is they'll try to match the tone, texture, and color right under this point. 
And anywhere in this circle, I call it the circle of influence, when you move the sliders, that's what it will affect, the same tone, texture, and color that is there. So I could come in here now, and I want to definitely add some structure to the sky and some contrast to the sky. Maybe I'll pull the brightness down a little bit. I'm going to make it maybe just a tad warmer. Like that. Maybe not that much. Just a little bit warmer. And I, th I think that's pretty good. That was pretty much the way I remember it. But you can see it's really only affecting this left part. I want it to affect the rest of the sky as well. So instead of just adding another control point and trying to match the slider settings, all I need to do is hold in the Alter Option key, click on this little point right in the middle, this little pin, and drag another one right off. And it will have the same settings as the previous one. And then I'll do it again. Hold that Alt Option key in and bring it over this way. Make this one a little smaller. And you could click on them each if you need to readjust anything. And I think that looks pretty good. That's the way the sky looked, as I recall, when I was there. Now. With that said, um, I mentioned I do like the play of the cool tones and the warm tones, but I want to accentuate that a little bit. The warm tones look great, but the water isn't cool enough for my liking, so I'm going to add another control point there. So we're going to click here and add another control point, and we'll add it to the water on the far left here. And make it a little bigger. And what I want to do here is I want to go to warmth and move this to the left to make this a little cooler. And then maybe we'll add some structure there as well. Then I want to get it on this part of the water. So I'm going to hold the Option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC, and pull off this point. You can see I accidentally added more than one point already. So we could just do this. And it works out. Perfect. This one isn't. So I'm going to delete this point because I screwed up. But we'll come to this point, hold the Alt Option key in, and then pull that out there. There we go. Now we have the same settings going across the water. Like that. And I think that looks pretty good so far. Now I'm going to close down control points. And I'm going to go back to my global adjustments and touch this up. Maybe bring up brightness just a little bit. Add a bit more structure here. And that looks pretty good. I like the sky. I like the warmth and the cool tones next to each other. Now, I think I'm done. Now, I have the option to save this as a preset. I may want to because I do have a lot of different uh, beach images from Virginia Beach when I was there a few years ago. But... If I did, I could click right here, but I think we'll just apply this now. And it will save it, and it will return us to Lightroom. Now, one thing about Lightroom I noticed uh, lately, uh, nothing to do with the Nick collection. It just takes a long time for Lightroom to update the image. You can see right now it's still the original image, and it will take a while for it to update. So we're just going to have to sit here and let it, let it do its thing until it updates. Okay, you could see it just updated, um, and that's it. That's the way I remember that morning when I was there. Um, I was there before sunrise, and it was a beautiful, beautiful morning in very uh, warm tones, the cool tones, and the sky looked great. And that is that. I did all the editing outside of lens corrections in Viveza 3. Um, that's it. I hope uh, this helps you better utilize Viveza 3. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>